Born in Newfoundland, Joel Heath has spent many hours in his eiderdown sitting in a box in the Arctic, listening to the Inuit tell their stories. From these up and close personal encounters, he has created a beautifully shot film which shines a light on the realities of global warming. It's called People of a Feather. It is my pleasure to welcome Joel Heath to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you for having me. I guess you like cold weather. I do, yeah. I'm you kinda, do, for sure? Especially when you have eider down, it keeps you warm, and so there's no worries. And I'm kind of mm. proportionally built like an Inuk, so uh, I think I'm adapted well for the cold. Okay, <laughs> and what led you to the Arctic? I, I went up there originally for, for school. I was doing my PhD uh, studying sea ice ecology, looking at mm -hmm. the uh, ecology of the, the winter ecology of the eider duck. And so um, I got up there, I got to meet the people in the community and formed really good relationships, made some really good friends. And, and that was the good part. Yeah, uh, sure. meeting the people, hearing their yeah. stories, the real yeah. stories. Yeah, I went up for the biology, but it became the people that, that won me over mm -hmm. in, at the end of the day. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. because uh, if this is your land, where are your stories? Is one there, of the great books ever written, and the so stories, stories of the, the Inuit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So take me there. Sure. Yeah. Um, How cold? Um, it, not as much cold as it used to be. When um, the first few years we were there, it was really cold, and it'd be minus 35 plus wind chill. And then if you're driving at 70 kilometers an hour on a skidoo, it gets uh, kind of cold. Um, but it's it's pretty rare that it drops down to minus 35 uh, these days. Although minus this winter. 35. Yeah. That's cold. And, and plus wind you chill. did get frostbite. I did. Yeah. Yes, I was, you did. Yeah, the first as soon as I was there, like the first uh, within two or three days, it was. And it was partly because I wasn't experienced in thermoregulating, dressing up, and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but and also because I was what are you supposed to do? What do they tell you? Yeah. Inuit who know what to do. Yeah, and it came as a real surprise. So you have to take snow, you have to take fresh water snow, and you hold it on, so it was all over my cheek, and so you hold it on your face, and amazingly it clears it up. But don't take salt water snow. It has to be fresh water snow because it'll just make it worse. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that was the I last time I learned the hard way. Uh, the hard way. <laughs> well, how do you know if it's salt water uh, snow or I guess exactly, you yeah. have to be an Inuit. Yeah. <laughs> have to be in a week to figure that out. I know so, now, sea ice ecology, what does that mean? Yeah, it's kind of the interactions between the animals and the ice and how they deal with the ice changing and moving. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and it, for the birds, it really makes a big difference because uh, they, ha they need open water in order to, to dive, to feed. And so yes. um, depending on the dynamics of the ice, it really affects the, what habitat is available for them. And the people uh, and the eider. Tell me yeah. about the eider duck first. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge bird, it's like three kilograms, it has the warmest feather in the world. They dive to the bottom to feed on mussels and sea urchins, they swallow the sea urchins whole, um, which is amazing. They're super tough birds adapted for winter in the Arctic. Most birds migrate, these ones stay there all winter long, and so they were a key resource for the people. That was interesting, no migration, they yeah. stay there, so they are yeah. totally dependent on They're, what's going on with the ice and yeah. Yeah. all of that. And the people make a living plucking those feathers, not exactly yeah. plucking. Tell me how that works. Yeah, so traditionally they would have sewn the skins together um, into these beautiful parkas that we were able to recreate for the film. Um, now they collect the down from the nest and put it into kind of modern yeah. textile parkas. And, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a hard job. Yeah, it's so much work. You have to collect the down and uh, then go through and clean. There's usually some kind of lichen and sticks and that in it. Mm -hmm. and so it takes a lot of work to, uh, to sort through. Yeah, and what about those mosquitoes? Yep. <laughs> that. The nice thing is if there's a bit of wind, the islands are all very long and narrow, so often there's a bit of wind off the water, so uh, it's not as bad as some places, for sure. Mm -hmm. But there's a wonderful uh, part in the film where uh, one of the men picks up an egg out of the nest yeah. and takes it to the ocean, yep. floats it in the ocean, mm -hmm. and it floats yep. rather than sinks. Yep. So he says, there's a baby in here, put it back. Yeah, that's a check. You can tell uh, how far along the development of the egg is, mm -hmm. depending on whether it floats or sinks. And so. But they do eat these birds too, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Pretty much. In the fall time especially, like once they're kind of grown and they put on lots of fat over the summer, that's kind of the biggest time. And then they're flying along the shoreline early mm -hmm. in the morning. So even kids get up before they go to school and uh, go out hunting to bring back lunch for their family. It's and lunch is? Eider duck, yeah. Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> that's the best option anyway. I'm, yeah, eider duck, uh, anything else? Yeah. Um, I they, guess there's not a lot of lettuce. No, that's the, exactly the thing. There's fried chicken and everything else that comes in from the mm -hmm. south, but uh, definitely the best option is local free range organic country food. Right. Yeah. Uh, what does it feel like being up there? You were there, what, how long? Five years? Uh, I've been working there 10 years, so since 2010. 10 years? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so typical day for you. 
Um, early on, it would have been out on the ice in my box, staying there for most of the time. These days, it's been more traveling around, trying to learn more about the larger scale of the of the islands and learning mm -hmm. about different the oceanography and different right. places. Right, and the islands are well. the is it the Belcher Islands? The Belcher Islands, yeah. The Belcher Islands, yeah. yeah. Right. Out in the middle of Hudson Bay. Yeah. yeah. And it's, there's very diverse habitats because the, the oceanography on different sides of the islands is very different around the east part of Hudson Bay. And uh, so there's a real diversity of habitats and sure. animals. And, uh, so what do the people tell you about what's changing? Yeah, um, it was a surprise to me at first when I learned. I went up there with the kind of the preconception that, you know, I was going to be looking at the effects of climate change, environmental change on, on sea ice habitats. And uh, I learned more and more about how hydroelectric projects are actually a huge part of that. And uh, because electricity demands are mm -hmm. in the wintertime, whereas spring runoff is in the summertime. And so basically the hydrological cycle is being reversed and all this warm fresh water gets dumped onto the sea ice in the middle of winter at the opposite time of year. Because of the hydroelectric facilities? Yeah, it's because basically the energy is stored as water behind the dam. Um, mm -hmm. And so that means that the rivers are basically at the mercy of our electricity demands. And so part of what we're wanting to think about for solutions is ways that we can store and distribute energy differently so we can still use hydroelectric power, but just kind of make it a more environmentally friendly right. way of doing it. And, and who's on side with that? Um, no one right now, but the momentum <laughs> that we've been getting. Wait till they see people of yeah, a feather. Yeah, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's been really exciting to see the dialogue that started to happen with that for sure. Uh, so what uh, were the challenges shooting this? I mean, yeah. cameras at minus 35. The temperature was a big thing for sure. Um, one of the biggest things was to recreate all this clothing for the people that hadn't happened in like 50 years. And uh, the skill was still there. There was a, a lot of the people that actually helped make the clothing. A few of them have already passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and it took about a year and a half to get to get all the skins cleaned. Right. And, uh, but it was great. We brought the elders into the school. They showed the kids how it was done. And so it was part of the, the culture program for the school as well. Sure. Yeah. So the elder tradition was, uh, take me back. Yeah, they would take like 30 skins and you'd have to clean off all the fat and then you cut them and you sew them together. The women would use the female birds, the men would use the male birds for their parkas as well. Really? Yeah, yeah it's really, and they're, so the, the men's parkas are a lot blacker because uh, the mm -hmm. male eiders are black and white, whereas the mm -hmm. female eiders are this beautiful brown model color. Yes, that's because yeah. we're not supposed to be seen because we're having You're babies. The, on the nest, And right, you yeah. are the peacocks. Right. The males. Vulnerable <laughs> to predators, yeah. Vulnerable <laughs> to the predators and all of that. Uh, but. Uh, the whole idea that you spend all that time, I mean, every day, every day pretty much the same, I'm thinking, aside from the odd polar bear that might Yeah, that'll mix things by. up. And th yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. Did you see polar bears? Did you come we, up close and yeah, sometimes uncomfortable too close. with a polar bear? Yeah, sometimes like when we were sleeping, we were woken up by one shaking our bed one time. That was, that was definitely really? a wake-up call. <laughs> were you sleeping in the box or were you sleeping in no, a little house or an igloo or what? Yeah, we had a cabin in some situations, but there was a few places we were working where we had a weather haven tent and uh, we had a bear fence, but somehow the snow drifted over, the bear got through the fence and uh, it was trying oh. to get into our tent. I guess it thought it was like a sealed in. It was trying to break in. And, Great. Uh, yeah, I good. hear polar bears aren't that friendly. Well. Many bears aren't Most that them, friendly, even yeah. though we see in the movies that they, yeah. th they're cute, but you For don't sure. want a grizzly, you don't even want a black bear no, trying to get into your tent. It's a personality thing, though. I think some bears are fine and will avoid you, but if you mm -hmm. get that, that one jerk, then uh, you got to watch out. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, the kids in this community? Yeah. Say there's a, a, a young Inuit lad who would like to be a doctor, like to go to university, uh, like to get out, yeah. like to be a movie star. Yeah. One of the really exciting things is that just in the last year, um, Simeone, the lead character's son, Daniel, who's in the film, mm -hmm. that was his first winter out hunting on the ice for this. And now he's decided that he wants to go on and be the wildlife officer for town. He would be the first local wildlife officer. So he's up in a Iqaluit, he's going to school. Really? He's working really hard and uh, that's really exciting. Oh, great. Yeah, it's awesome. When you leave yep. uh, the Arctic, what do you miss? You come back to the city. Yeah, the people for sure, mm -hmm. um, the slower pace of life even though when we're in production it gets pretty busy, things just kind of take their time a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, the cold, crisp air in the middle of winter is definitely right. great, yeah. What about tea time? Tea time, yeah, a cup of tea mm -hmm. in the cold is great. No, we have a, yeah. uh, a guest on the show, his name is Brendan yeah. Way, and he was yeah. raised there. Oh, okay. And he's a yeah. tea sommelier in the city now. But yeah. he said he spent so much time drinking tea with the Inuit because that's yeah. what happens. That's, yeah, that's where you have your dialogue, talking, mm -hmm. the storytelling. And what are they t yeah. telling stories about? What are they talking about? Uh, it could be anything from experiences on the land uh, within a day to mm -hmm. 
different stories of uh, how one of the guys almost went through the ice with a skidoo or right. uh, different animals that they've seen and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, some of the most interesting stories were about how things had been changing and stuff. Yes. And then about their past, about some of their, their ancestors and how they used to live. And, yeah. and global warming? Did yeah, they talk yeah. about it really? I mean, if it's happening, they're watching. Yeah, for sure, especially recently, it's pretty much undeniable. You could, things mm -hmm. are totally different. So when we're out on the ice talking to people, it's really clear that, you know, this used to be a nice smooth open area, and now it's all piled up ice, and uh, things are definitely mm -hmm. changing up there. It makes it a lot less predictable for people and harder for them to sure. make decisions. Sure, because when the, the ice breaks off yeah. or piles up, then the ducks yeah. can't feed, I'm thinking. Yeah, it affects the birds as well, and the birds, the birds affect the birds people. and the people, and yeah. all of that. Yeah. So when they celebrate, yeah. when there's a celebration, yeah. a birthday, a something. Yeah, a big community feast. Big or community like. feast. Yeah. yeah. What happens? Uh, everyone in the community pretty much gets together and mm -hmm. they share food. It's like a, a giant potluck. Everyone's share bringing, a duck. <laughs> yeah, share a duck. <laughs> share ducks. Yeah, share some seal uh, meat. Uh, lots of local free-range organic food, which is. Uh, Really? Yeah, for sure. The, the other option up there is kind of fried chicken or like mm -hmm. food with a lot of preservatives. And so people still mm -hmm. really take pride in bringing back local food for sure. Not a lot of veg? Not a lot. You can get some food that comes in there mm -hmm. for sure on the plane, but uh, high carbon footprint for a bit of lettuce in the Arctic for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. High carbon. <laughs> and not so much nutritional value. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What do you want uh, Canadians, Americans, uh, festival watchers mm -hmm. to glean from this film? Yeah, I think first and foremost for me, as well as what comes across in the film, it's very cultural. It's about the people, it's about their past, their modern mm -hmm. day life, the comparison between the two and how the Eider kind of ties that story together. Yeah. Um, so it, it's such a compelling cultural sure. story. And that was, yeah. the plan was to have that kind of be forefront so people understand what life is like up there. And uh, through that story though, we understand how things are changing, how they're different, and in particular, mm -hmm. how hydroelectric projects are reversing the seasons. So right, the exactly. Cycle. And yeah. uh, the last of, of our hunter-gatherers, yeah. really. Yeah, they're still living. I'm not saying they're going away tomorrow, but it, if you can't make a living and you can't eat, yeah, yeah. What and do the do? ice changes and the ducks go away yeah. or die, big kill-off. Yeah, it's, I mean, food security is a really important mm -hmm. thing for people up Very there. Very much so. And so it's uh, really important that they can maintain that part of their traditional life. And they're living sustainably. They're, we should be looking to them towards mm -hmm. solutions for us to be kind of sure. thinking about sustainability. Lessons so. for us and yeah, the quiet. Sure. I bet I bet you yeah. miss the quiet. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out on the, on the ice in the middle of nowhere. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, I understand. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Opens tomorrow night, Friday, March 2nd. People of uh, Feather, where? Yeah, uh, Van City Theater at 6.30. Van City Theater at yeah. 6.30. Yeah, and then we're at Denman next week. And Great. hopefully the Rio. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you're on a roll. Yeah. You're on a night or duck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you. Uh, Joel Heath, People of a Feather. And remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.